Well, today we'll be looking at this nicely built Fender Champ clone. It belongs to a friend who is in fact a gigging musician who plays blues harp but doesn't use the amp because he doesn't like the sound of it. So we're gonna have a closer look and see what's going on with this amp. So there is some hum on this amp and some noise if you turn open the volume knob. But nothing to be worried about. Let's take some measurements. The best place to measure the high voltages is to use the positive side of the capacitors, the big black ones here, these three. If we uh, connect our lead to the ground and measure up here, we will see, we see 415, 413 volts. On the next cap, we have 352, 53. And the last one, 307, 306 volts. There are some indications of voltages which we should see in these places. They are not on the schematic, but you see here, Fender schematic says 340 or more than 340 volts on the first one, 250, 295 and plus 250. But let's just print out a fresh schematic and note the current voltages on this schematic. We'll, we'll proceed from there. So let's test the first capacitor. 409 volts. Second one, 350 volts. Last one, 303 volts. Let's note this down. Next, we need to measure this resistor, the resistance over here, or the voltage over here rather will be the cathode voltage of the power tube and it's 22.4 in order to calculate the bias we also need to know the voltage here on the plate and to find this point or this pin on the power tube you can also check the pin that has a lead leading up to the output transformer there are two wires coming from the output transformer and one is going to the board here to the first capacitor and the other blue one is going up to the power tube it's the only connection from the output transformer to the power tube so this will have to be the plate 400 volts in order to calculate the bias for this output tube we have to take the voltage drop across the cathode resistor which is this 470 ohm resistor there is a 22.4 voltage drop because there is zero voltage here it's ground we take this voltage and divide it by the resistance in ohms it's easiest to use these, uh, this nice uh, bias calculator on the Weber website you just click down we're in class A with one out power tube we are using the 6V6 GT plate voltage is 400 calculate the bias that we can have 31 milliamps we're seeing 48 milliamps Still. that's a lot we can also calculate the dissipation if we have 400 watts on the plate and we have like 48 milliamps of current then we can click here and see the dissipation it's 18 watts while 
Uh, maximum for a 6v6 GT should be 40 watts. I just turned off the amp to cool down the tubes, but still, you should really measure uh, the resistance on this resistor with your meter and not just suppose it has a value that you see indicated. Here, just having turned off the amp, it's at 452 ohms. As the resistor cools off, it will raise in resistance value. But then still, um, if under load this resistor provides 450 ohms, I will use this in the calculation instead of the 470. Anybody who has got some understanding of math will see that if we um, decrease this value here, the plate current will go up still. Um, the correct value would be 0 0.0497 which makes like 50 milliamps which is a lot let's note down that the 6v6 at uh, 400 volts can take like 31.5 milliamps that's what we got from the Weber website right <laughs> coffee? You like coffee? Mm -hmm. Mm. That's good. Mm Recalculating the dissipation, this is wrong. We will get to 19 watts, where we should see 14 watts. What do you think, Bonnie? Should we change the bias on Frank's amp? Hmm? Check, check this. Check it. Yeah, yeah, it's very high. Yeah? It's a very hot amp. This might not be good for a hard player like Frank. You know, he wants some distortion, not all clean tones. Huh? You like clean tones, huh? So if this amp is dissipating 19 watts, this power tube, then it's no surprise that uh, Frank complains about uh, not liking it very much. Um, biasing the amp that hard will make it as clean as it can be. Of course it will still distort at high volumes but um, this is not ideal. Well the problem is not very new because when these amps were designed in the 50s they had like 110 volts in the outlet in, in America and this changed over time to 120 so there's 10 volts already here that we have more and the same problem occurs in of course in Europe because we are using these export transformers. But still, um, this is not good for the power tube and this will burn up the power tube in no time. We need to change something. So as nicely built as this amp is, it was maybe not so smart to just copy the value from the standard Fender 50 schematic, these 470 K, uh, 470 ohms resistor here this one and we could change that we could take it out and put another one in but I want to do no uh, no real destructive changes to this amp we now. could also add in an extra resistor 5 watts or something this will have to be a very big resistor because there are high voltages here to bring this 410 volts already down a bit but that means also soldering up some new components in this amp I don't think, don't think I want to do that. So this is what I've decided to do, or try at least. I have this old uh, 5Y3 GT rectifier tube. It's a Belgian tube um, made for Philips, Adzam. Um, and this is a real old tube I found in an old 5 watt uh, amp. I'll put this in and we'll check the voltages, see if there's any improvement. Here's the tube that was in the amp, the rectifier tube, this 5Y3 GTE, selected by our friends at Tube Amp Doctor. Hey, what's this? There's some additional writing on this tube. 
Oh no. Oh, 1973. Gold lettering. I think we've seen this before in the <laughs> in the EL 80 84 comparison. This is I think this is a Russian tube from 73. I put the values with the other rectifier tube on the schematic but because the plate fault just didn't change so much we got 30 less volts here but uh, it didn't change the plate current which is kind of strange how it could should still uh, go up from here to here so calculation of the bias here is the calculation we end up 20 volts voltage drop divided by 450 ohms 44 milliamps at uh, 396 volts is 17 watts still too much okay let's have a look at what transformer power transformer is in this thing if we can have a look like this hmm okay pony Bonnie, why are you in the captain's chair? Are you gonna help me with this amp? Hmm? Yeah? Okay, I googled the writings on the transformer and I found a schematic for the transformer. It's uh, by Mojo Tone. Anyway, if you look here, it should put out 330 volts on the high voltage. But uh, we get three. 80 we get 400 why do we get 380 on that line okay let's have a look it should be connecting because we are in Europe here we should be connecting to the 0 volts and to the 240 volts that's what I learned while working on the Gilosos who have a variable uh, power transformers as well so it should be connected to the black and red Oh, look here, the side that's wired to the switch to turn on the power is the black and green. Here's the black and green, it's for 330, 230 volts AC. If you connect to this, why you have 240 volts as we have here, 238, you will end up with more voltage there, more than 330. Because of the conversion from AC to DC, it will be even more. All the other primary unused leads of the uh, unused leads of the primary have been uh, heat shrinked, but you can see here the red and red and black that should have been connected to uh, the power switch or uh, to the mains. That should be used to put in power into the transformer. I also saw that the first step down resistor in the power line is uh, maybe suffering from heat. It has some discoloration, some blackening in the middle. This may be uh, because of the too high voltage. It better, maybe better to use even a higher wattage resistor here. So this amp was built in a, in a sort of amp building course at high school amps. and. Uh, Yes, for now we won't proceed with this amp. Uh, first talk to Frank and see if we if he wants to change the power lines there to connect up the 240 volts because like this the amp is going to burn up tubes uh, if used intensively. It hasn't been used much in the last few years and I also he also told me that he got a spare tube, a spare Tungsol 6V6 GT when he bought the amp from the guy who built it. I think the guy who built the amp uh, sort of knew what was wrong with it. Uh, nobody just uh, gives you a free power cube. So, check back later for an update on this uh, champ, what will happen to it. Thanks for watching.